everything inside me. The following are excerpts from Caitlin Johnstone's new book, entitled, Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. I think you should read the full version. Okay, without further ado, let's start the video. In Tolkien's Middle-earth, the affairs of men are dominated by a cabal of wizards who understand the esoteric art of using language to manipulate reality in a way that advantages powerful rulers. Oh wait, sorry, that's regular Earth I was thinking of. That's what happens here. Some conspiracy type people say, the world is messed up, because we're ruled by Illuminati, or reptilians, but I'm way more out there than that. I say, our entire society is made of imaginary thought stories with little relation to objective reality, and some clever manipulators have figured out how to exploit this. The real underlying currency of our world is not gold, nor bureaucratic fiat, nor even military might. The real underlying currency of our world is narrative, and the ability to control it. Everything always comes down to this one real currency. If you look at what all these think tanks, NGOs, media outlets, and grant-making networks that billionaires pour their money into actually do, it ultimately boils down to controlling the dominant stories that people tell about what's going on in their world. Real change won't come until people rise up. People won't rise up, as long as they're successfully propagandized. People will remain successfully propagandized until they evolve minds which can't be manipulated. Our world will change when our relationship with narrative changes. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Most of humanity's problems boil down to an unhealthy relationship with narrative. Individually, our suffering ensues from believed mental narratives about self, other and world, and collectively our destructive behaviors are driven by the propaganda narratives of the powerful. Most people's lives are dominated by mental story, so whoever can control those stories, controls the people. The good news is, that all we need to do to reclaim our world from the controllers, is to reclaim our stories. The barrier between us and freedom, is as thin as a fairy tale. The world is messed up, because powerful people, think in terms of narrative control, and ordinary people don't. Change that, and you change the world. The three most overlooked and underappreciated aspects of the human condition are, 1, consciousness itself, 2, the way compulsive thought patterns shape our experience and our lives, and 3, the effects of mass media propaganda. In that order. The primary reason people are so vulnerable to propaganda, is that hardly anyone clearly sees just how much human consciousness is dominated by mental narrative, there's a night and day difference between reality and the stories minds tell about reality. Manipulators exploit this. Most people assume that the mental stories in their heads are an accurate reflection of what's happening outside their skull, and that simply isn't the case. Manipulators know they can just feed people stories, narratives, about what's happening, and they'll accept those narratives as reality. Manipulators know they can trade a bunch of convincing words in exchange for all sorts of real valuables, Money, sex, deals, loyalty, votes, political power. Humanity's diluted relationship with narrative means you can get real concrete treasures in exchange for pure illusion. Most of the things which consume your attention are pure narrative constructs. Religion, philosophy, culture, politics, the economy, even what you take to be your very self. But few ever take the time to sift these narratives apart from reality, so we're hackable by a manipulator's the difference between what's happening and what the babbling mind says is happening, could not possibly be more different. Until our species evolves a new relationship with mental narrative which allows a real relationship with the real world, we'll keep moving toward extinction. For as long as there has been language in power, there have been narratives circulating to advantage the powerful. Much of our so-called culture is just ancient power serving protopropaganda, deliberately interwoven into our ancestors' worldviews. 
if people truly understood the extent to which mental narrative dominates their experience of life, propaganda, advertising, and all other forms of psychological manipulation, would be regarded by our society similarly to physical assault or property theft. Propaganda is the root of all our problems, people consent to inequality and injustice, because they're manipulated into doing so. And propaganda is only effective, because we've got an idiotic societal taboo, against acknowledging that we can be fooled. That our minds are hackable. Manipulation only works when you don't know it's happening. Those who think they're too clever to be manipulated, which would be the majority of people, are the most vulnerable to manipulation. If we just made manipulation more shameful than being manipulated, this could change. You cannot form an accurate worldview without accounting for the fact that powerful people have invested a great deal in manipulating that worldview, and that to some extent they have probably succeeded. Because being manipulated is considered shameful, most don't look at this. I have been manipulated and fooled. So have you. It happens to all of us. There's no shame in it. The shame belongs solely to those doing the manipulating and deceiving. Fraud is a crime for a reason, and the one they charge for that crime, is not the victim, it's the perpetrator. Conmen will always try to convince you, that it's your fault you were conned. If they can do that, they get away with the con. This is true of all manipulators, and it's why you should never blame the gullible. Being gullible isn't a crime, being a conman is. Nobody who is being successfully manipulated is free, and our world is dominated by mass-scale manipulation. It doesn't matter how many rights you have on paper, if you've been manipulated into supporting or consenting to the agendas of power, you might as well be in a cage. As long as the powerful are propagandizing the people, the people aren't truly operating with free will. Anyone who's escaped a relationship with a manipulative abuser understands that you're not really operating with much free agency while you're being psychologically dominated. Manipulation is a necessary component in long-term abusive relationships because people don't tend to stay in abusive situations unless they're manipulated into it. This is true whether you're talking about significant others or earth-spanning power structures. People have been manipulating each other since the invention of language, and manipulating each other at mass scale since the invention of government. All that's changed is the mass scale has gotten much larger, and the manipulation much more sophisticated. The world would be so much better, if everyone just watched people's actions, and ignored their stories about their actions. It would radically change politics, it would prevent abusive relationships, it would stifle manipulators, and it would transform human civilization. If you ever feel unimportant, remember that rich and powerful people are constantly pouring effort and wealth into trying to manipulate the thoughts in your head. Hi I'm Sleazy McPundit with WMD News. To explain why more internet censorship is needed to fight disinformation, here's a panel of millionaires who are paid to lie to you. The mainstream worldview isn't mainstream because it is more fact-based, logical, or makes better arguments than other potential worldviews, it's mainstream because vast fortunes are poured into keeping it mainstream. Mainstream news is just advertising. You watch advertisements for maintaining the plutocratic status quo, then you watch advertisements between those advertisements for useless crap to make plutocrats even richer. It's all just different layers of marketing. When I was getting my journalism degree, they used to talk about journos selling their souls, and going into marketing, going into PR. It's like, you're already doing that. Without extensive marketing, it would never occur to you that Mountain Dew is something you should put inside your body, or that endless war is something you should accept as normal. War is the worst thing in the world. By far. If the rank and full public could see past the veil of propaganda and distortion, and objectively see war for the horrific thing that it is, ending it would immediately become everyone's foremost priority. Hence all the war propaganda. It's such a trip, how opposition to mass-scale murder and oppression is the single most self-evidently correct position anyone could possibly take, yet so few take that position in a clear and unequivocal way. The reason is, of course generations of propaganda brainwashing. People only ever think you're wrong to reject mainstream politics and media, because they have no idea how f things really are. It only takes a rudimentary understanding of human psychology to manipulate someone. 
Edward Bernays was recruited by the US government to study the science of modern propaganda in 1917. This science has been in research and development for over a century. Don't underestimate its power. Propaganda is so advanced that rank and file members of the public will openly cheerlead their government's imprisonment of Assange so that their government can continue to lie to them. The dawn of political insight is when you realize propaganda isn't just something that is done by other countries and other political parties. To be a real journalist you must ask inconvenient questions, shine light in inconvenient directions, refuse to parrot establishment narratives, and be indifferent to the approval of the powerful. To be a rich and famous journalist, you must do the exact opposite of these things. If you're liking what you're hearing, you can buy a book by Caitlin Johnstone entitled, Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix on Amazon. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.